Hi, I'm Joel. I'm an application engineer here at Armstrong International. I'm with the Humidification Group. And today I'm going to go over some of the key installation and maintenance features of this HC6000 humidifier. When you first open your humidifier box, you'll see some accessories, including ionic beds which need to be installed in the humidifier before it's running, some hose cuffs to connect a copper pipe out of our outlet, a drain tube, which we'll talk about later, a mounting bracket, which has holes on 16 inch centers, and then a bag of clamps, lag bolts, and keys to get into the humidifier cabinet. When installing the supply water to the humidifier, there's a hole in the bottom to bring a line up to the fill valve, which has a standard 3 8 compression fitting on it. For the drain connection, we connect to the funnel at the bottom of the humidifier. We supply a 1 inch clear hose and a clamp to connect. Be sure to connect to an open drain or a funnel and not hard pipe this or water could back up into the humidifier. For electrical connections, the main power will come in through the bottom of the electrical cabinet and connect to either the contactor or a terminal block on larger humidifiers. This is the low voltage terminal strip where all the signal wires will be run for the controls. There's a knockout on the side for those. The default control signal is a voltage input. If you're using a current input, such as 4 to 20 milliamps, you'll want to move switches 1, 2, and 3 on dip switch S2 to the on position. When you start the humidifier up, you'll see the startup screen, which says Armstrong HC6000 and the version of code you have. The basic operation of the keypad is you would hit enter to go deeper into a menu and you hit escape to back up. The arrow keys will be used to scroll through things. If we hit enter to go one level deeper, we'll see another set of menus. The first menu is language. I can change the language in there. The next menu is unit status. If I hit enter to go into unit status, I can see the unit demand and steam output, among other things. If I hit escape, I'll go back out to the first set of menus, and I can scroll down to the next one, which is Operation Setup. If I enter Operation Setup, it will ask me for a password. In this case, the default password is all zeros, so I can hit Enter to go all the way in. Inside the Operation Setup menu, I can change things such as drain time and the input signal. When you're starting your humidifier for the first time, there are some settings in the Operation Setup menu we should look at. If we enter into the menu and scroll up, the first one we'll see is Sensor Select. You use this to select whether you're using a humidistat or an RH sensor. The next one is Signal Type. And in this, you can select 0 to 10 volts DC, 0 to 5 volts DC, 1.9 to 3.9 volts, or 4 to 20 milliamps as your input signal. You should also change the corresponding dip switches on the main board when you change this input. Be sure to save your settings when you're done making changes. If I hit escape, I can go back out to my main menus and scroll down again to get to the unit configuration menu. In the unit configuration menu, if I hit enter, it will ask me for a password. You do need a password to get into this one. It's all capitals, A, R, M, H. The purpose of any humidifier is to introduce water into the air to raise the relative humidity. The HC6000 accomplishes that by using electricity to make steam. The resistive heating elements are used to heat the water to make the steam. Once the steam is produced inside the tank, it flows upward through this outlet which is piped to either distribution manifolds and ductwork or a fan package. When you first start the humidifier, the first thing you'll hear is the fill valve come on because the unit needs water. Once you think you have water flow, you can verify it by watching the center tube. You can see the water level raise in the humidifier. Once the water level reaches the low level probe, you'll hear the contactor pull in. From there, It'll continue to fill until it reaches the high-level probe. 
but you can go to the unit status menu and scroll to temperature to watch the water temperature rise until it's boiling. Now we'll go through the procedure for changing the ionic beds. The first thing you want to do is go into the operation setup menu and switch the unit to manual drain if there's water in the tank. Next, you'll need a screwdriver, Phillips, and an adjustable wrench. Come over to the side of the cabinet and you'll take off this, this cover first. Next we'll remove this cover plate. It's held on by six wing nuts. I like to use an adjustable wrench to loosen them up. Inside will be six ionic beds. You can remove them by pulling them off the studs. This is a used ionic bed. It should feel hard like coral. If it's still soft and pliable, you may have more hours left. And you can put them back in and use them longer. A new ionic bed goes in at about a half a pound. An old ionic bed should weigh about two and a half pounds dry. The ionic beds should have captured most of the scale. But if there is still some residual scale inside the tank on the heating elements or the drain, you can clean that out either mechanically by scraping it away, or you can use a chemical product such as Right Quick to dissolve the scale. Part of the regular maintenance of the humidifier is to clean the level control probes and check the inlet screen of the fill valve for debris. This is the level control canister. On the top you'll find three conductivity probes, which you may need to clean as part of the regular maintenance. These probes can be removed by removing the top wire and then unscrewing the probe from the canister, then it can be cleaned. I suggest doing one at a time so you can keep the wire order. This is the conductivity probe. If there's scale on it, just use an emery cloth to remove the scale and then replace it. Go through and clean the other two using the same method. To clean the fill valve inlet screen, turn off your water and remove the inlet water line. You'll find the screen behind this nut here. If the screen has debris on it, use a needle nose pliers to pull the screen out, clean it, and then replace it and put it all back together. That concludes the typical maintenance on the HC6000 series. For further questions, please see the humidifier installation manual on our website or consult the Armstrong factory at 269-273-1415.